Where are we, Michelle? Camping. Where? Hidden. Hidden camp. camp. Pie Creek. Pie Creek. Nice fire. Hey, Michelle. I'm nervous, Gwen. Watch this. No, I don't want to watch. It's called cutting a big hole. Oh, I'll make sure it's right. Oh, well, let's hope so. Well, we've got the diesel heater installed, and um, I was a skeptic. Who needs a diesel heater? Honestly, I did it. I installed it. It's 153 bucks on uh, on eBay, and uh, I took my time installing it. Used it this weekend, and geez, it works really well. So here it is. Here, press the on button. On it goes. Starts to heat up. Four or five minutes, and it's already heating the van up. Yeah. It's a bit dark here in these back streets. Don't like driving in the dark. I like to be set up at camp and having a beer rather than setting up in the dark. All right, getting to this um, hidden camp, it really is hidden, parked in the uh, Near the Amor Forest in Gimby. And um, if you come at night, make sure you got plenty of light because it's dark out here. Looks like a campsite down there. Yeah, oh, well, oh. it's really pretty. Sam, sit on your bed. Daddy so your chair. it's time for a beer. Cheers. Cheers. It was our camp last night at Hidden Camp Pie Creek. Side the dam. We'll take you for a walk around the property. So the dam is uh, low, apparently. Yeah. Looks like it's normally a lot higher. You've got a flying fox over there, you've got swing as well. Flying fox, Quiet. little island, and this is the track we drove in on last night in the, um, dark. In the dark with the van. Here's the island. Have a couple of steps. Michelle, grab that and swing out over there. No? It will make for great viewing. Hey, wouldn't it? Yeah. Flying fox goes across there. And a little platform. I guess that's for the flying fox, of course. Yep. Well, what do you know? And the little camp kitchen. There's a little bridge to drive over the damn wall. And this is the rest of the campground. So, it's a chicken coop, um, some showers, uh, some toilets here somewhere, and lots of ducks and geese that are quite noisy. That shower's up there, yeah. Just a little basic gas shower. You gotta turn the gas on before you go in. Yeah, okay, not for us. <laughs>
and it's the back of the property. Um, last night there was about four caravans up here, uh, right in this uh, circle here. So behind the uh, the dam here, you know, we're starting to lose the lights about what five o'clock, five thirty, uh, something like that. Five twenty-one. Five twenty-one. Lights going down, and they've got solar lights everywhere. Um, it actually looks quite um, quite nice when you're driving down here at night. And here's the little uh, camp kitchen with all its little solar lights on. So they've got a pizza oven, barbecue, couple of barbecues. There's a fire pit over there, barbecue table, a little bridge over there, and it, there's normally water in that creek there. Um, that fills up this dam a bit more uh, and uh, yeah let's have a look into the camp kitchen I think there might even be a light in here let's have a look there's a light switch and there we go we have light so in here you've got empty beer cans and it says meals lots, and are made here. lots of empty beer cans I could have made some memories in here and there's records on the roof records on the roof <laughs> There is records on the roof. And let's have a look into the... What do we see here? Yeah, I see trees. Yeah, see, that's what I see. I see trees of green. And did you know that Michelle was never, ever a musician or a singer? And I am still not. No. <laughs> oh, we'll see about that. So, yep. You can see trees through the microscope. Ah, telescope. If it's a microscope, you'd be a scientist, wouldn't you? Yeah. Do I look like a scientist? <laughs> and there's a fridge and another barbecue, sandwich maker, and a microwave. And around here is like the kids' area. And recycle your cans here. A kids' area. Well, there's a little fort, you know, that'll keep them, keep them going for a few hours and then throw them in the dam. Oh, after you teach them to swim, of course. I can't swim. I can't swim. I need to learn. Gonna take you up to the front where we came in, where you can meet old mate. So this is the other side of the gate that we uh, wouldn't open for us this afternoon. And as you drive in, after you get your code right and the gate opens, you come down here and you're greeted by... Old that's mate. him. Old mate. Old mate. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. I think he's been here a while. And as soon as we arrived, all these solar lights dancing around in the... Uh, in the camp made it look quite enticing didn't it look quite but it was good because the, care the caretaker came out to show us all around you wouldn't have to look so yeah so the caretaker was so doug, they've doug, all got sensors it on it doug, doug yeah doug, doug the caretaker showed guy. us around he comes and brings you firewood in his truck he did in his quad bike um yeah and there's there's lights hanging everywhere it just makes it uh pretty pretty pretty, <laughs> pretty appealing we are trying to film at night and it's not very effective. There's probably some nice ambience in the uh, in the images. Anyway, we're going to get back and uh, we had a big lunch, so maybe not cook very much. No. Have a snack and some more beer. Bye. G'day, I'm with uh, Leah from Hidden Camp. Pie Creek. Pie Creek. Yep. And um, you know me, Glenn from the Wandering Huckleberries. Michelle's up there doing the dishes. Uh, good girl. <laughs> and um, we were looking for somewhere different. And uh, we heard of um, this place, but couldn't find too much on YouTube. So we decided while we're here, we'd uh, have a chat to the owners, Leah and Callan, Callan. Yep. And, um, and make a bit of uh, a video. So we'll post it up soon. So how long have you been here at um, okay. this camp? We've been here for about two years now. Uh, we have lived here for a little bit longer than that, but been open for two years. And every 
week we are progressing. So yeah, we've had some people that have come when we started and come now and the improvement is amazing. We always listen to people's feedback. So yeah, mm -hmm. we're only getting bigger and better as we go. We're actually at the moment looking for Hidden Camp 2.0, which is a little bit of a secret. Um, so we'd like to open another one somewhere. Okay, so um, what got you into uh, wanting to open a uh, campsite? <laughs> My husband actually. He's right. quite the enthusiast on camping and outdoors. He loves being outdoors, which is why this is his baby. And uh, we just saw Hip Camp on Facebook one day and just decided it was something we were going to do. Our caretaker Doug was our first guest and has never left and is now our caretaker, <laughs> so we're super thankful for him. Um, but yeah, he, we just saw it on Facebook and thought it'd be a great idea and we've just gone from there. So you saw this place for sale? No, we had already brought this house, um, so and we bought our property, and we just went, wow, we've got an amazing dam, which is great, and we just, we know how amazing it is here, so we thought we'd share it with And that's else. the dam behind us here? Yeah, absolutely. Which is a little bit down on water at the moment, apparently. It is. So we've been uh, running um, at dam for about ew, a year and a half now since we had the floods, which was horrific. Um, and it's just started to get a little bit lower, but it's still great. We have uh, two kayaks, which we uh, leave at the dam side that people can use. And we've also got tubes and then we've got rope swings and a zip line. So the dam is quite a feature for any families that are here because your children will not leave it. And it means that you get to relax. Fantastic. So you mentioned you've got uh, plans for 2.0. Is that this property or another property? Another property. So we love hitting camp number one, but we would like 2.0 and 2.0 is going to be bigger and better, but I'm not going to share any more until <laughs> we found the correct location. Because as you know, if you don't have a feature, then it's just another camping grounds and we're just all about Well, that's, that's it, isn't it? We um, honestly look for places that aren't just sitting in somebody's paddock. Yep. Because there's plenty of those where they say there's no facilities, bring your own, sit in our paddock and this is how much we're going to charge you. Yep. But, you know, when you've got places like yours and, um, you know, some others up the road here that we've been to, mm -hmm. uh, we're up around Gympie uh, Shire at the moment, and there's, uh, there's a, a few that we've been to that you would have seen on our uh, uh, YouTube uh, episodes. Yeah. And they provide, you know, yeah, some uh, quite interesting camp cooking yep. demonstrations or there's music or, um, you know, there's, uh, there's lagoons, there's mm -hmm. things to float around on and... Uh, it's it's more than sitting in a paddock. Yep. Because you can do that in your own backyard, really. Um, That's a very good point. And uh, then there's caravan parks. And, uh, you know, if you've got a hybrid or you want to go camping, you, you're not in a caravan park. Yeah. So... Um, that's what we're looking for mm -hmm. and i guess there's plenty of people as you seem to uh, understand because yeah. you've got things that happen Absolutely. you mentioned to me earlier that you have uh music yeah so long weekends school holidays special events stuff like that we like to put on live music wood fired pizza nights we do jumping castle because i like to keep kids entertained we do movie nights uh we've got uh coffees and we have a little shop here as well in case you forget anything because we've all done that before. Yeah, toothbrush. Yeah, that's it. So we like to provide for our campers as well and we don't charge any extra for any of the live music or anything like that. So we do like to provide and create an atmosphere here. So it is something that we do work on. And uh, what sort of music do you get? Are they just locals from... Yeah, absolutely. So we have Tim and Aid that come out here and they're an amazing couple that come out and uh, do our live music. One plays the guitar and a few things different instruments and then we have Tam who sings. Michelle. I'm nervous, Glenn. Watch this. No, I don't want to watch. It's called cutting a big hole. There we go. <coughs> Here's uh, going to do a, a pilot hole first, and um, 
then go and have a look underneath and make sure I'm not uh, drawing into anything that I don't want to. I've already been under it, so it should be fine. So we've positioned the flange. Just a... There we go, there's our pilot hole. Now I'll duck underneath and make sure that pilot hole is uh, where I want it to be. Okay, there's my drill coming through there. And it looks like I've got plenty of room for that hole. So we'll go and cut a bigger hole. Okay, moment of truth. Here goes. Flat battery. There we go. It is done. Okay, so I've pre-assembled the base with the exhaust. Um, that's this one. And the air intake, which is this one. Um, there's the fuel line. And just cable tie that back away from the exhaust because obviously that gets hot. Um, these mounting nuts... There's no um, no washers, uh, no spring washers, no nothing. So I'm going to tighten them up. I don't have any Loctite, but I'm just going to put some general purpose glue on the thread so that uh, it um, you know, stops the nuts falling off. If I'm on the corrugations, that should, uh, at least they won't be able to unwind. Um, Maybe Loctite would be a better idea, but I don't have any at the moment, and uh, I'll just tighten them nice and tight. Okay, I've got the flange in, and I just use some of that uh, appliance sealant, which is heat resistant. So, a bit of uh, silicon around the edge, that's all secure. There's a hole for the front, so all I've got to do is um, pop that in the hole and uh, secure it. And that'll be us for today. And tomorrow, it's get the fuel line done. So I got myself one of these PVC boxes from JCAR. And I mounted the diesel fuel pump in it. Because it's got to be mounted on an angle. Right? Also, I figured this is going to protect the fuel pump from rocks and things when I hit the, uh, the track heading out to Birdsville. And, as a bonus, it may even uh, keep it a little quieter as well. And then that just gets screwed up onto the chassis. All good. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so, as I didn't have enough uh, fuel line, I have mounted the diesel fuel tank in here. Um, and it's quite a tidy little fit there. So, one little hole there, you take these... Um, uh, shelf runners out, the drawer runners, at least on one side anyway. And there's the spout, uh, the nipple goes down there, bolts onto the inner wall, doesn't come through, nice and tidy, and I'll show you underneath. And that's where the fuel line starts, right there. Um, and it'll go down here to the fuel filter, which I'll mount there. And then there's the fuel line, which I'll put in some protective uh, sleeve tomorrow. Not today. I'm done for today. Okay. Diesel heater installed. Um, I can hear the fuel pump. It's doing a thing. Seems to be warming up in here. Oh, yeah. Um, I've tried to read the Chinglish instructions and failed. I think I'll just have to watch videos to try and work out how this thing works. And the remote control, it doesn't work until you program it or pair it with this uh, controller. And again, the instructions are absolutely no help with that either. But it is warming the van. Happy wife, happy life. Cheap Chinese diesel heater, and it's doing the job. So there it is. Works a treat. Comes out down there, and it's blown out hot air. Uh, you really don't notice it in the morning when you turn it on. You just heat up gradually with it, but step outside, and it's brisk out there. Step back in, and you go, well, that thing really does work. There you go. Go and get one. I'm your huckleberry.